Hello, everybody, all over the world. Today is a very, very nice day and a great opportunity to talk about with all of you about the principles about mountings, about the basics about mounting. It's a great honor for me to talk with you today about these themes. Uh, as I said previously, um, we want to have today a little mix out of a uh, little PDF introduction into all of the basics. And after that, I have prepared the wheelchair. So we are switching in a few minutes um, to a little bit more practical things. If you have any questions, if there are any questions, feel free to write your questions into the chat. And uh, I will try to answer the questions directly in the presentation. And also the team of Link AT will talk to you a little bit about that. For those who are the first time today in one of our Mounting Monday presentations, um, then I'd like to introduce myself for a short second. Um, yeah, my name is Robert Coles. I'm the sales manager and tr trainee from the company Red at Engineering in Germany. We are a manufacturer of mounting equipment to be able to mount all kinds of assistive technology devices to wheelchairs, beds, tables, and all kinds of, uh, we're doing all kinds of installations for um, also switch mountings. Um, so everything that needs to be mounted on a wheelchair, on a bed, or on anything um, that might hold a communication device or an, an system into a right spot where a customer with mobility issues can use it good enough um, is something that we are mounting. So, um, yeah, about me. Um, my name is Robert. I'm an occupational therapist um, and working for more than five, uh, I have worked for more than five years as sales consultant in um, Germany for a big AEC company and have done there a lot of installation um, of mounting solutions for AAC devices at customer's chair. And now I'm here responsible for sales and training. So, today we want to talk or I want to introduce you into some basic principles about mountings. And there is one main um, sentence that I think that is important to, 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 for all of you. And um, there is nothing magical about mounting. So a lot of people all over the world are a little bit scared and think that um, there is extremely tricky to install a couple of things. Uh, and especially an AAC device at the wheelchair. And I think, or it's my point of view, but I think everybody is able to learn how to mount and how to install and also how to adapt a mount to a wheelchair. You only need to um, learn some mechanical rules and need to understand the principles. So what are the opportunities that are available? Um, and you need to also to analyze um, the current customer situation. So what are what is the point of view of your customer? So what is important for him in terms of the mount? Um, what is his daily situation? So is he in, in a school, in a wheelchair? Is he traveling a lot? Um, you also need to analyze the expectations of the environment because they can be very, very, very different. So a mother and a father can have totally different expectations uh, in, in terms of, of the adaptation of the mount. And the bus driver, for example, that transports um, the, the customer every day can also have different um, expectations in terms of flexibility, um, they, they, want, they expect also sometimes things like to be able to mount everything um, away from the wheelchair in a few seconds. So you need to have a little bit of a basic product understanding what is available, what is possible. And this is something that we want to talk about today. What are the do's and don'ts? And when you see a wheelchair, what are the things that you need to pay attention for? Um, that after you have done the installation, everything works smoothly enough. So everything that you need to know about and successful communication is that it only works good enough together when we have a good combination of the three important factors. We need to have a good device and a good switch selection and also a right working language system for a customer. And both of these 
first two th steps can only work smooth and very, very good together for your customer if we also have a proper mounting solution that holds the AAC device in the right spot where your customer can access the tools good enough without experiencing um, strength, fatigue or pain and without the risk that the customer is scared that the communication device will drop down and will be lost again. How can we mount an AAC device? So the first question when we see a wheelchair and when we know what is the position where our AAC device needs to be positioned. We can see here on that picture an example of that chair and also an example about where the communication device needs to be positioned. And we see there is a little gap between that needs to be filled. And how can we fill this gap good enough, flexible enough without distracting um, very, very relevant wheelchair functionalities. We can adapt that with a couple of lines and with a couple of connection points that hold everything in the right spot and that can give us the, and our customer the opportunity to use his device good enough. So we are using for that a system that we call three-dimensional mounting solution. There are a couple of differences between that three, um, 3D dynamical systems um, that I will introduce you today. First, we need to talk about some considerations about mountings. And those who attended last week's maybe know that presentation slide, um, but I think these points are very, very, very important and relevant when we are thinking about planning a mounting solution. So the mount and the communication device needs to be ready accessible in all environments where the customer will be. And also when they are sitting in, in, in a wheelchair at home and when they're sitting in a wheelchair in the school, that might mean that we need to think about a solution that they can use on when, when the customer used to have two wheelchairs, um, that we maybe will need two basic components that the customer can take from one chair and um, take with him to the other chair. The communication device needs always to be positioned properly and very, very, very economically. It must be very flexible because the customer situation might change during the days. But also it must be very, very safe, stable and secure because otherwise our customers will always be scared that everything uh, that, that the communication device can be fall down. And when it's not strong enough, the customer lives always with a, uh, with a consistent um, uh, scare about the fact that uh, he will lose his voice again. And it might and should also be nice to look at it because otherwise the customer can be also feeling, yeah, when, when someone will see me with my chair, um, they, they might feel uncomfortable about the situation. That means when we are looking on the starting point, we also have the five W questions in terms of our planning when we want to talk about how to plan a mounting installation on the wheelchair. So we will also have that five W questions. And now we need to change our perspective and need to bring our perspective into the focus of the customer because our ideas as an occupation and also maybe as a, um, oh, sorry, someone needs to have this microphone on. Um, and also as an, an, an caregiver and therapist might be completely different from the perspective that our customer might have. So the starting point here is who will use the communication system. And also every user will have different requirements about his mounting solution. So a customer with cerebral palsy that goes to, to his school um, might be have different requirements than a customer with ALS. And also kids will also have different expectations about their mounting solutions than adults that have a normal speech um, situation. And also the who has also uh, an opinion about what are the expectations from the parents, from the caregivers, from the speech language pathologists, the occupational therapists, or also from the physiotherapists that, might need, that may need to adapt the wheelchair mount um, in a later state, or that, for example, nowadays sometimes need to install the mount 
um, to help the customer to use their devices. The question about the what is what kind of system is going to be used when we're talking about a mounting solution and that will also have an effect in choosing the right mounting solution for these customer. So it might be that we're only talking about a switch, about some beginning AAC stuff like in Big Mac or in step-by-step -step, or the right access method like an Integra mouse, what can be mounted with some light mounting solutions like our L3D product category stuff. But it can also be the what can also be that we are talking about a mounting installation for a heavier or more complex AAC device like an X and 1000 and Smartbox device and Toby Dynavox device. Um, it could be very, very, very different. So what can be there for a customer, the right mounting solution? And when you're looking on that overview, you will see that there are three main categories that you need to understand um, as a first question about the what. So what kind of mounting product can I use when I want to mount my eye gaze device on a wheelchair? So um, as an as a little overview, there are, for you to understand, there are three main categories of mounting solutions. As you can see here on the right side, there is the product category L3D. So the L is for all the light devices. So all light devices means we can use the L3D stuff for all communication systems until 1.2 kilograms. In the middle, you can see the middle category, the H3D, that means a hybrid mounting solution. This is a little mix out of the light L3D stuff and the mid-class um, uh, M3D stuff. So this is an, an mounting solution that can be used for all devices between um, no weight until 1.8 kilogram. So it might be uh, also a nice solution for some light eye gaze devices like an um, iMobile or an iMobile Plus, so everything that is up to 1.8 kilogram. And we also have that M3D product category, which is for all extremely heavy devices until six kilogram. So that gives us a an, an, an very, very nice introduction into the beginning. So when we know what kind of device we will use when we are using only a an, an little step-by-step, -step, then we can choose some light stuff like the L3D. If we are using an Toby on uh, I, I13 or I16, then we should think about planning a mounting solution with an M3D mount because this is a little bit more stable, this is a little bit more solid. But all of these mounting solutions use more or less the same components only in different sizes and in different lengths. We're talking today about some different differences between device sockets, what are the differences uh, in terms of the tubes, what are the opportunities of joints and how can you install them right, and what are the different base components that you need to know and that you need to understand. So the possible solutions that are available are here as a little overview for you to see. So there are some standard mounts like the Monty 3D QuickShift, but also the L3D stuff, all the light stuff also have standard three tube configurations. There are some eye control mounts that are a little bit longer, more stable, have more um, adjustability options, and they are more solid. For customers that want to have some folding opportunities, that wants to swing the way uh, the mount upwards and forwards to swing, to get the the communication device out of their view, then there are some foldable options, and there are also some short mounts with one or two tubes that we are mostly using for switches. But it could also be that we are using a short mount with only one or two tubes when we want to mount a very very light touch base device on a stroller or a walker or something like this. And we also have that curved mounts that are a very, very nice solution when there is a lab tray that is installed on a wheelchair or when we have a very, very nice small attaching point on the, on the side of a wheelchair where we don't want to have three uh, or, or uh, yeah, 
a lot of material installed on it and also when we want to remove the mount um, then the base is very very less material that remains on the chair and there are also some bundles um, for switches and control mounts so this is the main category the question about the what we know now we want to mount an and Toby i110 so we can go into a very 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 light product category, product category. when we are mounting an an and grid pad with an eye gaze device which means it is more heavier than the question about the what is an eye gaze mount so this is for you to understand what is the 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 the, the, the direction where we need to choose our mounting solution so when we're seeing our wheelchair and when we are knowing in what position the communication device needs to be positioned we can after that question after we are knowing okay we will need um, for an eye gaze device an eye gaze mount choose an eye gaze mount for that kind of customers but where where can we install and where can we put all these components on that wheelchair and when we are looking on the wheelchair then a lot of customers when they seeing the chair are a little bit scared about okay so what could be the right in, uh, the installation point what is the right frame clamp for that chair because the, the wheelchair options are extremely big so there are power chairs there are walkers there are strollers and every chair has different kind of functionalities that we need to understand so i don't want that you look like that lady here on that picture that you're that you're scared i think as soon as you understand what kind of options are available um you are not anymore scared because you need to understand when we are seeing a wheelchair and he has the, the chair has a round tube then you only need to choose a round frame clamp if you see that the wheelchair has an rectangular tube then we have different kind of options about rectangular frame clamps if you know that there is a an, an wheelchair that has round tubes maybe that are connected to each other, like you can see it here on that little picture, then we can also use some constructions with some plates that we can use from both sides to stabilize the base components between it and fix it there on the spot where the all the for the mounting components will hold good enough and strong enough. So these are a couple of options. Also, when there is a round tube that is covered um, to, to attach a round tube completely round, because some, some of the wheelchairs used to have that round tubes very, very close to the seating construction, and sometimes there is a plate on top of it, um, then we also have the opportunity to use a same open health open frame clamp to install the mount there. And also, there are some basic principles that we need to talk about. When you install the mount to a wheelchair, you always have the chance to install it on the left side or on the right side. But we are talking here about mechanics. So everything that is connected, everything that you install, all kind of joints components have quick shift levers and also they have bolts to tighten up everything. And also when we have the chance to install anything on a wheelchair, we have the chance to choose on the left and on the right side. But our requirement is always to install the mounting solution as, uh, yeah, always on the right side. Because when you put all the components on the right side, and when you put the weight on that mount from the communication device, the gravity force moves always upwards and we need to talk uh, we need to pay enough attention that all the components when there is when there is some weight load that comes onto the components that it goes with the friction direction of our screws when we are putting the device on the left side and the weight influence will move in the opposite direction of the bolt there can be a risk that in term, due to the vibrations and all of that stuff, there could be a written risk that the vibration loses all the bolts and then um, the mounting solution will lose his friction and his stability and there is a risk that the communication device will drop down. So as you can see here on that SpongeBob and Patrick example, if you are not paying enough, uh, enough um, attention onto the left side mounting, there might be a risk that the device will drop down like you also, Patrick. 
So what kind of wheelchair specifications do we see on a wheelchair? We need to understand what kind of wheelchair is our customer using. Is it, like you can see it here behind me, only a standard wheelchair without any adjustabilities? Then we have maybe not so much things we need to pay attention for. But um, if there is a chair with a lot of tilting functionalities, with some movable footrests, with some height adjustabilities, with some standing functionalities, then we need to know that because once we have installed everything to the chair and then the chair goes in an, in an standing functionality, for example, that might move the complete mount in a direction where we don't want to have it. Also one question that we need to ask our customers, is it allowed to install some clamping materials on the wheelchair? Because some wheelchair manufacturers, especially that ones that have some very, very lightweight um, wheelchairs, they use stuff like carbon as a material and that is very, very, very sensitive. So when we are putting some clamping force on the frame, it might be damaged after that. Um, Question number three is, is there a seatbelt attachment for the transport um, that will happen every day? Because uh, we are talking about a lot of kids that are traveling every day between their home and the school and needs to be transported. Um, is it a foldable chair? Can, do we need to fold the chair together every day? Uh, also, is the wheelchair stable enough to hold the device and also the mount together? Is the wheelchair height adjustable? Is there a standing functionality? Is the backrest or the seat tiltable? And what are the components that, that move with the tilting functionality? Is there a lab tray um, that will be installed every day? This is also th something that we need to know because otherwise um, the, the mounting components might be maybe too short for the customer. Um, do the brakes still work when we install everything to the, the wheelchair and are also the footrests swingable because otherwise the customer can maybe not go anymore in the chair and also out of the chair. So when we are looking on that chair, for example, like here, uh, we see that this is the chair with a fixed um, footrest, for example, there are some very, very small brakes that are very close to the side of the chair. So we see round tubes, we see a couple of attachment points. Um, so this might be an opportunity to mount everything on the footrests or very, very close behind the front wheel um, as attaching points. But as you can see here, this is a very, very, very similar chair, but with foldable footrests. So that will also have a little bit more limits for our installation in terms of the installation points for um, and frame plan. So these are two possible points, for example. And also these kind of comfy chairs, a lot of people with ALS, for example, using that kind of chair or with some um, spinal cord injuries also as well. Um, and these kind of chairs, for example, they're using a lot of times that seating tilting functionalities. Um, and when the seat is getting tilted, for example, the frame of the basic component that is connected with the front and the back wheels never follows the tilting. And that will mean when an eye gaze device is installed um, on a good high position that it will not follow the direction of, of um, the customer. So there might be sometimes be some hidden spots under the seat that are also very, very good for the installations on a chair. And when we are looking on a wheelchair like this, with um, also some tilting functionalities. Sometimes there are some spots also under the seating construction, under the custom-made seat. And also here on wheelchairs with an, 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 an height adjustable um, seat, for example, um, we need to find a good installation spot where it will also follow the direction of the wheelchair when, um, the, when the mount is installed there. Some rail systems, are available sometimes under the armrests when there is a standing functionality or also next to the seat that will also follow the direction um, of, of the wheelchair. Um, and also sometimes there are some spots with some holes very, very close to the seat that are good installation spots. Or also, as you can see here, this is also a tilting wheelchair where we're having also a rail system under the seat and on the backrest that will also follow the movement of the wheelchair. 
So these are some basic, of, uh, basic things that you need to understand because the situation of your customer might change over the years. And when we are starting very, very early with a customer, then it could happen that after one or two or three years, the customer gets a new chair. And then you want to make sure that the existing components that you have can be taken from one chair and can be um, maybe with another frame clamp also be installed on the other chair that the customer might use then later. Because the question of when is that you want that your customer has the access to his device. It doesn't matter where they are. If they are at the work, if they are going to the barbershop, if they are going outside, if they are um, going into daily activities in the zoo, um, because the situations might change for your customer as well. They're getting new wheelchairs, um, they are they're using their devices at home, in the kindergarten, in daily transports, at work, um, and that can have also an influence in the adaptation of your mounting components. So I think that was a lot of theoretical stuff. Um, so I, I, I don't want that you are scared about, okay, so, uh, there are a lot of components, there is a lot of mechanical stuff that we need to understand. Um, so that is the reason why I would like to show you now today how to install everything practically. And I know that a lot of you are, I think, working with, um, with eye gaze devices. So I would like to show you now um, how it looks when you want to install everything on a wheelchair, because this is, I think, something where we can talk about a lot of things and that can also take a lot of uh, questions away from you. So until right now, are there any questions that are on your side about some basic, uh, basic things, about some questions that you have when you're seeing a wheelchair um, and when you want to understand what is the right mount for a customer? Any questions on your side? So if there are questions, feel free to write it into the, uh, in, into the chat. What happens if you can get, can't mount on the right side? So yes, so if there is a an, an, an need to mount it on the left side, we are offering some basic components with some rotation lock functionalities. So if that happens, we need to know that information because otherwise, um, when you mount it on the left side and when the weight of the device will, um, yeah, will open the joints, uh, it might be risky for the customer. But you can also rotate um, the components into a direction into the left, uh, into the right side where um, it also will um, be like it is mounted on the right side, if that makes sense. I'm not sure if that makes sense for you. Oh, there is a question. I've got a client. A power chair user who is separate to use this communication device during transport in a motor vehicle, but it is my understanding that all mountings should be removed for safety during traveling. Yes. Is there anything other option for use or high tech during transport? He has low tech, but it is partner assisted. The driver is not able to support while driving. So the situation with um, with um, with installations during transport are the following. So it always happens on your own risk. So when there is an, an, an accident that is happening, um, our mounting solutions cannot be attached to any constructions of the car because in term or, or when, when an accident will happen or would happen, we can never say completely what happens with a communication device because the questions are all kind of communication devices are very, 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 very different. So sometimes there is a light device, sometimes it is a heavy device, sometimes it is an eye gaze device. So um, we could install anything to the wheelchair, but when something will happen in a crash situation, we can't guarantee what will happen with all that crazy forces that happens then on the car and with all the crash things that will happen then. So I would always recommend maybe not to use the communication system on the wheelchair and on, and if uh, if if some 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 customers or caregivers um, saying no, but I want to have it. It's it happens. It will happen on my own risk. Then it happens also only on their own risk. 
Maldivism question that we are getting asked a lot of times. And uh, I know that there is a need for, but at the moment um, we recommend to use the communication devices. Um, yeah, maybe not in the car if there is an, an other chance to use about partner scanning or about some alternative other ways. Do you only mount on horizontal tubes of a wheelchair? No. So if there is also, an, uh, as you see, have seen maybe on my previous slides, um, sometimes you also have some attaching points on um, vertical tubes. Uh, so it depends on what, what is a good attaching point that is free, accessible, and that will not have any influence in, in, in the wheelchair functionalities. Um, I think one of the last questions from my last trainings was um, that um, how is it then with the basics when we are talking about a light system? So the routines, the components are exactly the same. If it is in light stuff, it is in heavy stuff. It doesn't matter. The functionalities are always the same. Only the diameters are a little bit different. So Laura is saying thank you so much. Yeah, you're welcome. It was nice to have you with us. What increments lengths do the tubes come in? So we have, um, from a diameter point of view, we have two different diameters, um, yeah, three different diameters, 10 millimeter, 16 millimeter, and the 22 millimeter tubes. And the complete length of a tube can be from 10 centimeter, yeah, from 10 centimeter L3D up to uh, 60 centimeter length with an M3D. Any other questions? All right. So if there are any other questions, feel free to answer them. Um, otherwise, I would like to show you today how to mount everything practical on the chairs. So this is an example from, from a typical standard wheelchair that we are seeing a lot in our daily routines and our daily works. So when we are seeing that wheelchair and we are knowing we want to install everything here to the chair, we need to understand what kind of device gonna be mounted. So in that example, I would like to show you how to mount a touch-based device um, that later can be adapted very, very, very simple also to an eye gaze device only with a couple of components. So the situation is the following. Our customer needs to be transported every day. So that means they are taking the chair, they are folding the chair completely together and that happens two times every day. So what we need to think about now is when that happens and the wheelchair is getting folded together, um, then the mount should be removable very, very, very fast. That means we are choosing today a Monty 3D mount for a touch-based device. We are needing for these kind of chair a frame clamp and we need to find a good insulation spot. As I told you previously, we are installing the mount here on the right side because the right side is always the tight side. So when we are seeing our chair, we're seeing there are some breaks that needs to be opened and that needs to be closed every day. Otherwise the wheelchair is rolling away. Also, you can see here, there are some footrests. These footrests must be flexible enough. They need to be able, or we need to be able to fold them away to the side and also we need to take them away for the transport. And also the wheelchair needs to be folded together. We don't see any tilting functionality from the seat. So that means we can use an attaching point here on the wheelchair frame that is stable enough. Um, we see here and below, there is a round tube where we need to do at first a good measurement because when we want to install a frame clamp, a round frame clamp to a wheelchair, we need to understand what kind of size of a frame clamp we need. So this is a round tube. It is free accessible. That means we can use a round frame clamp. And after measuring the size, this is something that we can do with a digital caliper or with some measurement tools. We will find out what kind of frame clamp we need. So we know now, we need to have a frame clamp with a size of 25 millimeter for that wheelchair. And I also have attached this kind of frame clamp to this wheelchair here. We want to install it now here on that wheelchair. Um, we have done some measurements here on that wheelchair tube. So we know now here, 
we can use a round frame plant that is already installed. But also you can see here on top of that wheelchair, there is also a round tube, but it is covered here a little bit from that other round tube and from the seating plate. So we should now choose if we want to use the lower attaching point here for a round frame clamp, or if we want to use a higher attaching point, but then with a semi-open frame clamp. So um, a round frame clamp is one option that we can use for the insulation here. Um, Another alternative would be to use a semi open frame clamp, as we can see it here, with a half open side here on top of the frame clamp. Um, that could be something that we can install here on that tube. Um, as an example, um, as is also something that you can do very, very fast. So for installing a frame clamp, you only need to open the bolts on the frame clamp. So these kind of frame clamp needs to be opened completely into halves, and then you can take this frame clamp, put it on the frame, as we can see it here, and you tighten it up there only with your Allen keys. So now we have two different kind of attaching points that we can use for the installation for our M3D mount. So one of these options is on top of it and the other one is here and below. So these are the two options that we have. So now where we know that the mount needs to be removable for the transports, we should have some additional components also for the installation there, something like a base coupler. So a base coupler, for example, can give you the chance to remove the mount without opening a single bolt or a clamp. To install that component, we need to take at first this base coupler with the red quick shift lever. And also we need to take the bolt to install everything here to the chair. So we're putting the center bolt inside, taking the Allen key and putting everything here on a frame clamp. And now we can choose if we want to install it here on top of it or here on that lower position. So we're taking the component, we're holding it against the frame clamp and installing everything. So why is that base coupler important? Because otherwise, when you when you are not installing something like a base coupler between, you will always have one tube installed permanently on that wheelchair. Okay, so now the base coupler is installed and also to the base coupler, we can install something like this counterpart. So the counterpart will be then the attaching surface for the base components. And this is also the part that will be removable from the wheelchair. So we are closing the base coupler now with the quick shift lever and the safety pin and can start now with the installation from the components. So we need now to connect these three tubes in their different length to that wheelchair. So we are starting mostly with the shortest tube to be able to bring it into a position that is a little bit more far away from the wheelchair. And then we are going mostly upstairs in a mostly vertical position and bring then the last tube in a horizontal position to have a good angle for the position of the communication device. Um, for the installation on that frame plan, we need to have a base component also with a center screw. And these base components can be connected with the tube. 
also now here it is very very easy to explain you the righty tidy rule so when we are putting the base component and the first tube here to the base and when we are taking our allen key and tighten up the bolt then we are doing that always into the right direction so the clamping force is higher when we are closing the bolts with an right side or with an right side rotationing or rotating and also the weight of the communication device afterwards will also move the mount upwards and that will also have a right turning movement on the mechanical components so now the first tube is installed and with the base coupler when we are opening the base coupler we can remove that first tube very very easy and also later all other components and that's the reason why i would like to show you the base coupler in the beginning because a lot of customers um, asking us all the time after they have um, used in, 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 in one of our wheelchair mounts um, and then they are saying yeah but the first tube is always in the way we we, we we always need to open some components to remove the first tube but with the base coupler this is something that you can do very very easy without opening the tools after that we are taking the swivel joint that we need to swing the mount away during the daily routines and during the daily use so every swivel joint has a front side with a quick shift lever that can be opened and closed and also a back side that gets connected with the first tube also some principles here the swivel joint when it is installed on the wheelchair should always show to the outside and always also to the right side so now we are taking our allen key the center bolt inside the swivel joint is also the point where you open and close and connect everything so now you're taking the swivel joint and connect the back part with the first tube here so you move it very very smoothly here on that tube and also one principle that you need to know and that you need to understand is the swivel joint quick shift lever here for example can be opened and closed and when it is opened as you can see here the quick shift lever shows away from the customer and that has a very 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 simple reason because otherwise when this quick shift lever is moved to the back side and the customer will drive with his wheelchair through a door and will be crashing against the door frame this quick shift lever can open by himself or can break so we are rotating it onto the other side and now we are fixing or we are tightening up the center bolt only a little bit only a little bit because now we can install our vertical tube and can in that insulation still see in what kind of angle we want to have our vertical tube installed and the vertical tube is always recommended to be installed as vertical as possible we are seeing a lot of times customers with uh, vertical tubes that are installed like that to generate a little bit more space especially with eye gaze systems but the problem is when you install it in that way here you will have a lot of vibrational influence in it and also when you install it into a left side um, rotating position where it can open the joint um, it may open the complete component so as long as you are paying attention about in what kind of direction here the center bolt is getting closed and also afterwards the vertical tube is installed or the vertical tube will move in what kind of direction you need to make sure that also that joint component here will tighten up himself so once we have found a good position for your customer and for these for these vertical tube you can tighten up the swivel joint very 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 strong as you can see here when we are taking the vertical tube and when we are inserting it into the into the swivel joint it will fall down and it will also fall down when you are not installing the index ring so the index ring is a very very important component for the vertical tube because it will prevent 
when you put it on below of that vertical tube, it will prevent that the tube will slip through um, your swivel joint. And also, you can see here under the swivel joint, uh, under under that index ring, there is a curved latch that allows you to swing the mount away when your customer wants to get in and out of the chair. So you're taking that component, you're putting it into your swivel joint, and now you can swing it away, outwards and inwards also again. So once you have installed the vertical tube, this quick shift lever here should always be used, uh, should always be closed. And now we need to connect our vertical tube together with our universal joint. And the universal joint um, is the connection interface that holds both of these components together and gives you the opportunity for very, very easy and very, very fast adjustments in terms of height and position. So you're taking your vertical tube, uh, your universal joint, I'm sorry. Um, these universal joints are available with a quick shift lever for fast, uh, for fast adjustability. And they are also available only with an within central bolt. So a lot of therapists asking what is the right, um, the right universal joint for my customer? Should I choose an, an quick shift lever option or in bolt? Um, I always say also there, please ask or please pay attention for the environment. So where will the customer be? Is he in a school with a lot of maybe autistic kids that maybe also move on every mechanical stuff that they're getting in their hands? Then I would prefer to use and join always with bolt adjustability because then you will always need some tools, some Allen keys to adapt the position. Um, so, um, but when you need to do every day, a lot of times, um, little adjustabilities and adjustments, then I would maybe choose something like a uh, universal joint with a quick shift lever. So the universal joint can be installed here to that vertical tube. Um, and a lot of customers, they're doing stuff like they're putting it into the middle position of that universal joint and then they installing here um, the vertical tube, um, uh, the horizontal tube there and fixating um, the universal joint in that position. So, but as you can see here right now, there is a lot of tube that is showing upwards. And this is a great invitation for all people all over the world to use, for example, a backpack and hang a backpack on it. So when you install a universal joint and you need a shorter tube, please then choose a shorter tube. Otherwise, some people will come to the idea to use this as a holding system and um, will holding themselves there or will put a backpack on it. And it happens all the time. And we, we hear it from a lot of customers. They are, they are driving with their wheelchair, for example, in a bus, um, in, in a public transport bus. And um, then people getting into the bus and using that as a holding rail um, when, when, they are, when they are getting into the, the bus system. So, here, this universal joint, as you can see here, we have the full 360 degrees adjustability options with that universal joint. And as soon as we have found a good spot to use or that is in a good angle for your customer, you only tighten up here um, the quick shift lever and then it stays here in that position very, very, very strong. And the last component that we need is our universal device socket. And that universal device socket is the connection interface between your communication system and the mount. So you're taking the component, this one, this plate needs to be positioned facing to your customer, and that component needs to be installed here to that horizontal tube. So again, you open the bolt on the back side, and now you can put everything here to the horizontal tube, you tighten it up. And now your mounting solution is completely installed and can be connected with your wheelchair. After that, you can check if the mount is able to be swing away for your customer because when they want to go in and out, um, that should also be something that could be should be very, very easy for them. 
Um, you can remove everything here from that from that swivel joint. Also, something that is important for you to know as a basic knowledge, when you want to remove the communication system from your wheelchair, a lot of customers, they just opening the swivel joint, taking the wheelchair mount away and um, forget to remove the communication system at first. So mostly the communication system is hanging on the UDS together with the complete arm and then they're laying it to the side. Um, but it is recommended always when you want to remove the mount from your wheelchair to remove at first your communication system and after that you, you remove your, um, your mounting arm. And also when you want to remove now here that base component, you just open the quick shift lever of your base coupler and remove the component here, the base component, and then only the base coupler and the frame clamp will remain at your wheelchair and that makes also the entire transport per, um, process very very easy for your customer. So as soon as your customer changes his wheelchair we only need to have sometimes another kind of frame clamp, sometimes only another length of a tube, sometimes only um, a few components to adapt the existing solution but you only need to communicate with us what kind of components you need. When you want to install everything, like you see it here on the left side, you only need to have a base component with a rotation lock that prevents it um, from, from self-opening, for example. So these are a couple of basic things that you need to know about installations on wheelchairs. So I think next week, our next theme will be, um, I think it's about introduction to switch mounting. So next week we're talking a lot about how to mount a switch into a good position for a customer, depending on where our customer needs them with different options about flexible tubes with very, very nice small constructions. We will talk about switch mounting on headrests and all of that stuff. So I would be very, very happy to see as much as possible from you next week again. And uh, I hope for all of you, there were a lot of informations that will help you in your daily work, in your daily routines. I uh, apologize for my horrible English. I know that uh, this is something that might be <laughs> sometimes be in combination with a lot of so's and uh, a lot of stoppings. But as long as you are able to understand me, I think um, that's also fine. Good, wonderful. So when there are no other questions, um, then I wish all of you a wonderful start in the new week and uh, hope to see you again next week, next Monday. Have a wonderful day. Greetings from Singapore. Greetings back to Singapore. Please, all of you, stay safe and healthy. And uh, yeah, see you next week.